Right, here we go. This is something, again, something different. This guitar's been sent up to me from a guy uh, named Simon Clulo down in, lives down in Wells there in Somerset. And he is the choral vicar of Wells Cathedral. Uh, there you go, you don't get much better than that, do you? Um, and he's, he's seen me on YouTube and he's decided he wants me to, me being a Christian maybe, I don't know if that's got anything to do with it, but he wants me to have a look at his guitar for him. I'm actually going to refret this guitar, so he sent it up from Somerset, so I'm going to do an unboxing. The reason I'm doing an unboxing is the guitar's just arrived by, by a parcel force and I've not checked it for damage or anything, so I'm going to open it on video. I myself, I wouldn't use parcel force for guitars because you don't insure anything above 100 quid. I'm not sure if anyone's aware of that. You don't really get to find these things out until you make a claim. Uh, I think the, it might have gone up to 250 quid. I think the insurance is 150 quid now, I mean. So, wouldn't be my choice. I always send it via UPS. So, I'm going to unbox the guitar, make sure there's no damage. It's a, uh, the guitar is, I already know, it's a Hondo. Is it a Hondo? It might not be. Might have got that completely wrong. I bet it didn't. I can't remember that. There's a letter from... Uh, this is Frank. Please do a full refret. He suggested 2.3mm wire. Sounds good to me. I like vintage. Guitars had a basic setup before. Action nice at Mo. Got choking at 13 fret on the IE. I've been using it for Open G, but would like to use it for more stuff. Not happy to go with your suggestion. I've had bone before. If it's something better, let me know. Use what we recommend. Bridge. Probably best to keep it original. Told it three saddle bridges. Sound best so. Keep me posted on that. Is there something with a bit more zing that would fit on this bass plate? Who knows? String standard 1046 please. Ernie Ball or equivalent. There you go. Well I'll go with Deodario's then because I buy Ernie Ball 9's and Deodario 10's. Now what brand was this guitar again? I can't, I can't remember. Four packs. Um, it doesn't look like it's sustained any damage. Ah, it is a Hondo, I was absolutely right. Hondo guitars, now the early Hondo guitars were made in Japan in the late 70s, early 80s, and I had one. This is Frank. Say hello to Frank. There you go. I'm going to pause for a second, I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to come back. So, just bear with me a few seconds. And here we are, and everyone, meet Frank. This is Frank. It's a Telecaster, it looks like the classic vibe, doesn't it? Bit of an odd shaped uh, headstock there. Hondo Deluxe Series 757. The fact that it doesn't say Hondo 2, reissue or whatever, says to me that this is a very early model. Now Simon may have told me what model it was, when it was made and where it was made. I get the feeling this is an older model I don't think I'd be too far wrong in saying this is probably a Japanese one because, I mean, whether these have been replaced or not, I don't know. You've got Grover tuners on there. You've got the six barreled Telecaster saddles, six individual ones. I actually prefer six individual because you get a better, you get a better radius and you definitely can set your intonation right. So I think it's done right by sticking with the six saddle affair there. Some people say, I've never heard this said before, but in his letter he says, some people say the three barreled gives more, gives a better sound. I'm not convinced about that. I don't see how it could make a difference to the sound anyway. Using steel or brass, it's not going to alter the tone in any way. I would prefer myself to go with the six saddle affair like this. Uh, because you can set the intonation right. The nut, well the nut said it. That's coming off regardless. Um, I won't be using bone. Uh, as Simon suggested, he says if there are any other substances, well there are much better substances, there's a substance called Cyclovac which is a man-made bone which Fender use and I stock, I do stock Fender nuts, I buy them in bulk uh, and I store them in here and I have a bunch of them and this is what I use and they're complete blanks, here you go, proper Fender gubbins uh, and I cut these from these blanks and I cut one myself, so we'll do that with that. That'll be £7.50 for the nut. Um, it is a lacquered fingerboard, so we need to cut with a knife by the edge of the frets so we don't rip the lacquer out when we rip the frets out. Um, 
the guitar has a certain amount of mojo anyway. It's got dings and scratches and knocks everywhere. Now that doesn't bother me, never has bothered me. It's all about the solidity, the rigidity, and how straight and level the neck is. Um, it does say he wants a refret. I can understand why he wants a refret. Uh, these are all flat, they're worn. Um, we want to got away with skimming those. So we're gonna we're gonna bang the nuts out. We're going to remove the neck, we're going to do pretty standard uh, as we do um, a refret on this. I'll take extra care removing the frets, we'll get some heat in there just so it melts the glue and we'll lift them out carefully because we don't want to be cracking uh, any more of the lacquer. He did say if I really wanted to I could sand off the lacquer and just leave it a satin finish. I don't really want to do that. Um, I want to leave the lacquer intact, but if it comes to stage where we do actually damage the lacquer um, then we will sand it flat but no I don't think we're going to have to do that nice string trees on there nice grover tuners easy accessible truss rod there I'll have to go back read my notes find out when this was made we'll also do a complete setup on this I know it has had a setup but I'll give it that setup's not perfect those saddles aren't right for starters uh, so the, I know the radius is not right the action I can't check because the strings are loose, so we had the nails to loosen the strings for transit. Um, I will check the electrics, have a look at the pots, we'll get some switch cleaner in there if it's needed. Um, and that's it, we'll take it from there. This is going to be one I'm going to put on the back burner for a little while, uh, because I am chocker at the moment. Um, and I need to tell people there's going to be a wait. So that's just the nature of what it is. Um, Praise the Lord, we're nice and busy here lately, so uh, we love that. You know, idle hands and all that. Um, so that's it. Fine looking guitar. Um, going to be an interesting one to work on. A lot of work in there, a lot of hours. Um, so rather than just mess about, rabbiting on, I'm going to get this one away, get on with some work. I'll come back and give an update on this um, uh, in a day or two, whenever, whenever I can get around to working on it. So that's it for now. I just wanted to ascertain that the guitar's okay. It's arrived here safe. There's no damage. Uh, we can all rest assured and rest easy that the guitar's in fine fettle right now. I will come back with an update in due course. Take care. See you soon. Welcome back, my friends. Um, Frank, the uh, Hondo Deluxe Series 757 Telecaster. I've started removing the frets. Now you'll notice I've already removed the nut. The nut was a bit difficult to get out because it didn't want to come out, so we've had to basically smash it to bits. Uh, a little more subtle than that though, but what we've done is we've cleaned up the area where we've removed it, and we've got a nice slot back in there. I've ordered a new nut, and I wasn't going to work on this one today. I was working on something else, but there's something else uh, I don't have the parts I need for it, so I thought I start removing the frets and I am denied on whether to use heat or not on these frets because we've got lacquer. Uh, the neck is lacquered, fingerboard is lacquered. I thought I wondered if we're going to get a lot of chipping. Well, I've pulled two out without heat and even though they proved a little bit difficult to get started, once you get them started they come out relatively easy. So I thought I'd just show uh, how these frets are coming out and I'm, I'm not sure whether this is the right way or not. I've never, I've done lacquered fingerboards before and uh, I've heated them up in the past and I just thought I'll have a go on this one because it's a really old guitar, it's 30 odd year old and I thought I'll just have a go on it without getting any heat in there. So I'm going to turn the camera down and you can have a look and I'm going to show you how I'm removing them and all we're going to do is just turn that camera around to about, there you go and you might as well be here aren't you and I'm using my new Stumac chip stoppers uh, what we do is when we start getting the fret moving we place a chip stopper under there and slide that under as we pull the fret so I'm going to show you how we go on and it's not it can be a bit difficult to get them started I go right at the edge as much as I can and I just coax that edge up once that edge is coaxed it up look like so I've just seen I've got a chip there and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with this and I'm just going to push in as I move, remove the fret now I'm expecting I may get some chipping, and if I do get any major chipping, I'll start to use heat. I've just seen a chip fly out there. So let's have a look. You know what? That's absolutely fine. We've got a tiny chip there. Nothing to worry about, fret wire is going to cover that. 
So I think we're going to be okay. Just take your time with something like this, a job like this. Just lift out really, really gently. Chip stopper. It is trying to chip. So like I say, if I do start to get any chipping, I will change my method and I will go and get some heat in there. But as things are, This chip stopper is a great tool. Let me just show you. That's absolutely fine. Don't even need to sand that. We can put fresh straight in there. Absolutely brilliant. Coming out really, really nice. Um, are we about there? Yeah, I think so. So, again, just take your time with a job like this. You don't get anything. You don't win any prizes for going quick. Job like this, it's about doing the job right, not doing the job quickly. This press is coming out really, really nice. If we don't want to come up, just be gentle. You don't go mental, never go mental. This is someone's pride and joy. So, I'm going to explain how this job's going to work. Talk to the owner, and the neck itself is not exactly level along the length. It goes a little bit up and down. Only we're talking a tenth of a millimetre difference. It hangs down at this end here at the bottom, and there's a little bit of relief in this part, but it goes up again, then down again here. And we're talking a tenth of a millimetre in various areas. So what I've recommended we do, and I went and bought some fret wire for this, and I bought low 1.2, well not low, but medium height 1.2 millimeter and 2.7 wide, which I recommended. But I've changed my mind. I've decided to go with 2.7 millimeters wide and 1.4 high. The reason I'm going with the extra 0.2 of a millimeter height is because of the discrepancy in the neck and how it's not perfectly level. What we're going to do is we're going to get the frets in and we're going to do the leveling across the frets. It means some frets are going to be higher than others, but we're going to have a perfect uniform level across the length of the neck. And that way it gives us more leeway uh, with the frets being a little bit higher. It means we can take some more off the top of some frets, but we're still only going to be, you, we're going to average a height of round about 1.2 millimetres. I'll be a lot happier doing that after the level of being at 1.2 millimetres, just with a slight discrepancy in the fingerboard itself. So I've decided to do that. I've contacted the, the owner of the guitar. I've let him know and he says, yeah, go for it. That's absolutely fine. So he's happy to go with my recommendation, which is great. Doesn't make my job any easier, mind. What we don't want is any major chipping, because I'm not going to respray this afterwards. Now, the only did say if I wanted to, I could remove all this lacquer. I'm not going to do that. I said I'm not going to do that. Um, I said, what's the point of doing that? We could, if that is one way we could get the fingerboard absolutely level, by the way. But why should we do that and lose that sheen on there? Because I know how dark these go and how grubby they get um, as soon as you remove the lacquer. So I'm going to leave the lacquer on there. I'm not in a position where I can spray guitars or lacquer guitars. It's just I don't have the space. I don't have the facilities. You know, it's not something I can do at this time. So maybe in the future I can look at doing something like that. Now here, it's starting to get a little bit more chipping. Um, that is not, you know, I've got a chip there, not happy about that. So maybe I should look at the way I'm going to remove these frets now. Because that is not going in or under. And we've got a chip there. What I'll do with a scenario like this is the chip itself, I'll press back down. I'll press in, I'll try and come just over that chipped area there. I can get a little piece of glue under that. I don't want to be chipping anything. Um, I'm glad it's on camera. I'm glad you're getting to see it as well. Ah, that's why. If it gets to like where it, like it is now, where it's trying to chip in more places, then I will. Like, there's a big chip just come out there a lot. Right, so it's a matter of now getting the glue out and getting this chip repaired pronto. So I shall just... I'm going to just lift that up slightly, just lift it up there. All we're going to do is, I use the runniest 
CA glue. And all we're going to do is we're going to put a little dab of super glue under there. That's in. And we'll fix that straight away. Stuck that back down. And we'll just a little dab just on top there, and we'll file back down later once that's dried. I don't mind it going into the slot. We're gonna we're gonna clear the slots anyway later. What we'll do is when we get a chip, we'll fix the chip straight away. There you go. Now that will go a bit dull, we'll polish that back up before we get the frets in, so we ain't got to worry about anything like that. And there you go, we've got the chips fixed there, absolutely fine. Go with a little bit of... So you're getting to see this as I do it. Bit of natural there just to clean it all up. Once the frets in there, you won't see any of that. So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful removing these frets. I'm gonna carry on off camera. Uh, I'll get the rest removed. Hopefully we won't get any more chipping. Um, but like I say, nothing to worry about. I'll be back with an update again shortly. And here we are with the frets out. And I'm going to pause. I'm just going to sit there and hold that there like that while I talk. And you can pause or you can zoom in or whatever. There's no chipping on that. There was the two chips I showed you that I glued back in on this fret here. After that I went so careful with the fret pullers. I went across a millimetre at a time. And here's the other end we're done. We got a bit tricky around this end. Uh, because there's quite a bit of lacquer build up there. Um, so I had to be very, very careful. I could put one scrape in the fingerboard there. We're not going to worry about that. I've filled it in with super glue. Uh, that is now just cosmetic. It's just a little black line in there. We're not going to worry about that. We can sand, we're going to sand that out. I'm going to get this refretted. I've cut the fret slots. We're all ready. We're all ready now for putting new frets in. Uh, putting the frets in is the easy job. It's the easiest thing. I'm going to get to the radius. Whatever the radius is, I think it looks about... It's going to be around about 10. It's probably going to be 9.5. I'll radius a little bit tighter than that. We're going to get the frets in. I'm going to super glue them in. They'll go in really well because this wood is bare right next to the fret. Because what happens is with these, we put the frets in, then we lacquer over the top. I might do exactly the same myself, or if I don't do it, I'll whiz it over to uh, Clive Eastwood there at BB Guitars, and I'll say, just give that a quick spray over. Blah, 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 when he's doing some lacquering out there. Um, and it'll make it all neat and tidy again. The cosmetics aren't the uh, majority of the work on it. I mean, it's not major important to get it cosmetically looking good. It, it's structure we're looking for on this. I will get this looking as good as I can. Obviously, I treat my guitars the same. Um, we've got a nice nut slot in there. Uh, beautiful and even. A little bit of wear where I had to file into. It was a bind to get. I didn't film gaming or time. I should have done. It were a bind. It was all stuck on the inside and glued. I had to chip it out with a thin chisel and everything. Uh, but we got it out, it's clean, um, so pretty pleased with that, very pleased with how the frets have come out. Uh, it's going to be a nice, simple refret, this one. Um, and we'll get it all up to scratch. Alright, so for now, 
that's it. I'll come back with an update. I'll show you how we get the frets in and uh, that'll be that. I'll see you again soon. Right then, fret friends, I'm going to explain how we're going to do a refret on this Hondo Deluxe Series 757 Telecaster. Vintage model, early 80s, I imagine, it, well I don't know, I don't imagine, I know it was made in Korea. You'll notice all the fret slots have been cleared, cleaned and cut using a proper, fret. in fact I'll show you the fret slot. I'll just have to get in the way of the camera there, very unprofessional, but there you go, here's my fretting saw. It's a regular blade, um, a hacksaw blade, small one. It's coincidentally exactly half, half, a, half a millimetre wide, 0.5 millimetre, which is perfect for fret slots. And I've got a depth gauge on this, so I can only cut deep enough for the frets. So they're all cleaned up with that. I'm going to explain how I'm going to do the refret. Um, I'm going to use a, a neck rest block. Uh, for these middle frets. When I get to here, I won't need one, I can just use the heel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this two different ways. I'm going to use, you see I've got the fret press here, which is basically an arbor press that's been adapted. I took this over to my friend Clive Eastwood over at Beaver Guitars in Grantham and um, he drilled a hole in the arbor itself so we could fit the call um, or the call adapter. And calls, these are what calls are. That's a call, that's a 10 inch radius and it's a 10 inch radius neck. But as we get further away from the body, we go more or less down at this end. It's more or less, it's not, it's about, it's just about eight and a half. So what I've decided to do is, I'm going to press the frets in initially with a seven and a quarter inch coil. And what that's going to do is, it's going to take the fret wire, it's going to press in, and it's going to press in the edges. And the top's still going to be high. Now, when we come to doing the top of the fret, we're then going to swap the calls over, we're going to put the 10 in, and the 10 being a flat one, it's going to press it in the middle. So basically, we're going to take some fret wire. This is already radius to round about six inches. I buy it like, like, like this, I bought it in big lengths. This is a good brand, it's Boston brand, it's 18% nickel silver. It's 2.7 mil wide, um, and the height is 1.4. Like I said, I'm going with a high fret, because, we're going to, because the neck is a little bit up and down and I don't want to rip the lacquer off, we're going to level on the fret. So basically I'm going to do it is, I'm going to put in a 7 inch, seven and a quarter inch core in the fret press. We'll bring the fret wire over. We'll have the fret wire positioned in right there. We'll get it all lined up. What we're going to do is, we're going to press in with the seven and a quarter inch, then we're going to press it with the 10 inch. We're going to use some regular CA glue uh, this is the super thin stuff, it's really really runny, it'll come out of there absolutely no problem, this little pipette end there. So I'm going to crack on with that, I'm not going to film it, uh, you've seen me do this many times before, I just wanted to show and explain um, how I go about it. It's it's not a long winded affair but it's a fiddly affair so it, it's best for me just to get on with it rather than explain how I'm going to do it. Um, so I will come back once the frets are in, I'll show you how we trim the ends off and what we're going to do next. And here we are, I've scooted forward a little bit with this um, Hondo, um, but the new frets are in. I don't know if I explained this in the video before, you'll notice I taped up below where the, nuts, uh, the fret slots were, both sides and all around the back, because I was using really thin CA glue, or super glue we call it over here, and some was going to run out, so um, just tape it up so we don't get any all over the neck. Uh, the frets are in. Uh, they're not level, but we never were going to be level, um, they, whatever you do we don't go in levels, but they're in. So all we've got to do now is, I'm going to wrap up this part of the video here, part one, um, and I'm going to move on to part two when I get to do the beveling, the leveling and the crowning, because that's where the gist of the work comes in. So I think now we've got to this stage, uh, I've explained about the nut, how we've carved a nice nut slot there. Um, because it was quite a bit of a bind to get the old nut out, but we've sorted that out. We had a big chip which we've glued back in. You not see any of that once we've got it all glossed up at the end. Um, to take out, you've seen me take out the old frets. Uh, I had to be very, very careful removing them. A couple of things, um, you know, there's a bit of lack of build up uh, around these areas, but we'll get away with that. It's nothing major. So that's it. I'm going to wrap up this part of the video. We're going to get it all on the jig and we're going to get it all beveled, leveled and crammed. 
at a later stage. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you back in part two.